Let's worship y'all. Can we just start out real quick with this old chorus? Your grace is enough. Sing this together. Your grace is enough. on that passage of scripture. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Come on, let's sing this out. Who breaks the power? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. See, this is amazing grace. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me we sing of your grace who brings our chaos who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king above all kings who rules nations who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun and all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you will lay down your life that I would be set free oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me all that you've done for me next part. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Sing it out. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Take it out. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is a failing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. And you That I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Sing that one more time. Jesus, I sing for. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Let's continue worshiping the Father. We will bless your name at all times. 
our rough times, Father, you are still worthy. You are still glorified. Come on, church, we sing it. I can count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. No, you won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God that's never late is working all things out. It's working all things out, so yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy for all my days. Come on, say yes, I will. Yes, I will. First again, come on. We can count on one thing. I pray God that never fails. He will not fail us now. No, he won't fail us now in the waiting. The same God is never late. It's working all things out. It's working all things out. So yes, I in the lowest valley, yes, I yes, will. I will. That's your name. So, yes, I will. Sing for joy when my heart is heavy for all my days. Say, yes, I will. Yes, I will. For all my days. Come on, yes, I will. Yes, I will. I choose to praise. Come on. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. That nothing can stand against. Nothing can stand Come on, I choose. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. That nothing can stand against. Come on, sit right there. I choose. I choose to praise, to glorify. For all my, yes I will. Yes I will. For all my, days. for all my, yes I will. Yes I will. Last time for all my days, church. For all my days, yes I Hey, good morning, Vintage. Uh, I want to welcome you to our Sunday gathering. We're virtually uh, gathered together. Uh, a lot of us are on Facebook Live. We are having an issue uh, right now with our YouTube, so jump over to Facebook. But I just want to welcome you. I hope this week, uh, a crazy week, I hope it's been a good week. And I, I want to thank you for joining us, especially maybe you're new to Vintage. And we just want to welcome you if you're new to Vintage. Maybe this is one of your new first times or you're, or you're recently joining us. And hey, listen, right now, if you are new to Vintage, we would love to connect with you. Okay, We would love to know who you are. And so if you could right now on Facebook, just comment with your name. Pastor Matthew Weaver is watching. Uh, he wants to connect with you. In fact, we have a gift that we want to send to you. And so I want to invite you just to comment. Uh, with it. The comments are open all gathering, so you can comment with us, but especially if you're new to Vintage, we have a gift that we want to send to you, and if you would, just go ahead and comment uh, right now. We're so glad 
uh, to be gathered this morning across this city on our computers, in living rooms, and in, in dens. And we just want to thank you for joining us. I want to pray for us as we continue to worship. Mark and the team have led us now to sing. And, and we're just so thankful to be able to worship together as a church. Pastor Dustin's about to come. He's got an incredible message, and one that's, I think, going to encourage us and inspire us. And so if you would, just bow your heads right now, wherever you are. I want to pray for us as we continue on. Jesus, thank you. We thank you that we live in a day and age that has technology that we can gather. And this week, although has been chaos in a lot of ways in, in a lot of our lives, probably we thank you that you're Lord. And, and your grace is sufficient. And we thank you for your grace this week. We thank you that you're still ruling and reigning. And right now, as we open our Bibles, as we jump into John 15 and John 16, Lord, we pray for our pastor, Dustin, as he comes. We pray that the message that you've led him to share with us would be something that encourages us. In this, in this moment of so much uncertainty, Lord, we can have certainty in you. We thank you that you've sat at a table and you've spoke to us. And so we ask now you'd speak to us as we dive into your word, as we look at the message that you have for us as a church family today. And Lord, I pray that right now in these next few moments and these next few minutes together, you begin to stir and prepare in our hearts to continue to serve you. Because this week, there are opportunities for us to serve. In the coming weeks, there are going to be lots and lots of needs. And so we pray that this morning, you'd equip us, that you'd encourage us, that you'd inspire us, prepare us for the opportunities that we have before us to serve you, Jesus. Thank you for being Lord. And we pray to continue to use our church to serve this city and to be the church. And we pray, amen. Hey, good morning. Welcome again to Vintage Church. If I've never met you before, my name is Dustin Turner. I serve as the lead pastor of Vintage Church, and we are so excited that you're streaming with us. Uh, just a few moments ago, while we were singing songs, I was liking and loving comments on Facebook Live, and I want to encourage you, while uh, we are engaging one another online, use that comment section uh, to let us know how uh, we can pray for you. Uh, if there's something that sticks out in this sermon, let us know. Say amen on uh, that comment stream. We want to do everything we can within our power uh, to make this an engaging experience for you, like you are at church. Because, hey, right now, that's what we are doing. We are in church together, worshiping the Lord with one another. And so we are continuing this series called At the Table, looking at the life of Jesus in John 13 through 17, where Jesus is literally, he's had the Last Supper with his disciples, and he's hours away from going to the cross, being crucified, and a few days away from resurrecting from the grave. And in this last moment, he is sharing with his disciples some of the most important teachings that he could share with them. And today, what we're going to be looking at is what Jesus has to say, not only to the disciples, but to us about help, right? Right now, in our day and age, where we are at right now, I have a feeling every single one of us would say we need help. We need help figuring out what in the world to do about the coronavirus. I mean, you're trying to uh, isolate yourself and yet at the same time have community. Some of you have lost your job or you're, con you're concerned about losing your job, right? We need help. If you need help, I want to encourage you right now in the comment section, say, yeah, I need help uh, because we want to we hear that. We want to be praying for you as well. And so that's what Jesus is getting at. He's about ready to leave the earth 
And his disciples are concerned and worried that the presence of Jesus is leaving him, them. And what Jesus wants to remind the disciples, and what I believe he's going to remind us today, is that even though his physical presence is no longer with us, that's no longer with the disciples, he is still sending and bringing us help. And so that's what we're going to be looking at this morning as we hear from the words of Jesus. If you have a Bible, turn in your Bibles to the very end, the last uh, two verses of John 15. We're going to start in John 15, verse 26. This is what Jesus says to his disciples. He says, but when the helper comes, the helper, if you remember a few weeks ago, Pastor John McCann talked about the helper being the Holy Spirit. But when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said all of these things to you to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. But I have said these things to you, that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. Now, I think that there's three things that Jesus shares with us that I want to share with you this morning of how the Holy Spirit helps us. And so the first one is this, the Holy Spirit helps us share Jesus. If you go back and you look at this passage, he talks about the helper. Now again, remember, a few weeks ago, Pastor John preached on this. Jesus, this is not the first time in this Last Supper, in this uh, uh, farewell discourse, that Jesus mentions the Holy Spirit, but he's coming back to the Holy Spirit. And what he says is he says, the helper will bear witness about me. Now, when you think about bearing witness, you might think about a few scenarios, right? If you're a witness and you have to testify, you immediately begin to think about what? Courtroom. And you going to the stand, swearing and making an oath on the Bible and testifying about what you have witnessed. And what you have witnessed is what you have what? Seen. It's what you have experienced. Think about it maybe if you've never been to court, because most of us probably haven't, when you go online and you leave a review. If you've been to a restaurant or you went to see a show or something like that, you've been on Yelp and you leave a review. Why do you leave a review? Why do you share your opinion? Because you've been a witness. You're testifying to what your experience was about that place or about that restaurant. And so Jesus says the Holy Spirit's going to bear witness. He's going to testify. He's going to share about who Jesus is. Now the question here for us is this. Why can the Holy Spirit bear witness about Jesus? Now this is really important because Jesus lays out a few elements as to why the Holy Spirit can testify, bear witness, share about Jesus. The first one is this, and hopefully you caught this when Jesus was sharing this. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Of truth. What does that mean? It means the Holy Spirit can't lie. It means the Holy Spirit has to speak truth about the identity, about who Jesus is. Is And so the Holy Spirit can testify, can witness about Jesus because he's the spirit of truth. Number two, the Holy Spirit is not only God. Remember the three persons of the Trinity a few weeks ago? We talked about that, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But also, the Holy Spirit has been in relationship with the Father and the Son eternally. That's important. That means that, number one, the Holy Spirit is God. And number two, before time began, the Holy Spirit's been in relationship. Now, here's the thing about relationships, right? If you're in relationship with someone, you know something about them. Why? Because you've experienced them. And so the Holy Spirit can testify about Jesus because he knows Jesus. 
Not only is he God with Jesus, but he has been eternally in relationship with Jesus. And lastly, this. Why can the Holy Spirit testify or witness to Jesus? Because the Holy Spirit proceeds and is sent from the Father and Son to continue God's redemptive mission. Two really important words in that short sentence. Number one, proceeds. When theologians talk about the Holy Spirit proceeding from the Father and Son, they often are referring to the nature of the Holy Spirit, the being of the Holy Spirit, that He is eternally proceeding from the Father and the Son, but at the same time, He is sent from the Father and Son, referring not to His being, but to His mission. And why is that important? Because the very mission that Jesus came to the earth to accomplish, the Holy Spirit is coming to the earth to continue. And so the Holy Spirit knows about the Son. He can testify about the Son because he's continuing the mission that the Son started. So the Holy Spirit can testify, can witness to the person of Jesus. He can share Jesus. But did you notice something about what Jesus says? Jesus doesn't just say the Holy Spirit can share about Jesus. He tells his disciples and ultimately us that we too can and we too should and we too will share about Jesus. Now that's important. Why? Because part of what Jesus is beginning to get at is, listen, yes, the Holy Spirit is coming, but the Holy Spirit, without saying these words, he's going to say them later, is going to come into you. And part of the way that the Holy Spirit's continuing the mission of Jesus is by dwelling within followers of Jesus to share. So listen, the Holy Spirit helps us share Jesus. How? Number one, because we have experienced Jesus. If you have the Holy Spirit, that means you have experienced Jesus. You understand the gospel. You've taken the gospel and made it a part of your life. What's the gospel? Whenever we talk about the gospel, the gospel, literally that word gospel means good news. When we talk about the good news of Jesus, what we're talking about is we begin with God's design. In the beginning, Genesis 1, Genesis 2, God created everything and it was perfect. We, we were flourishing. There was uh, universal delight in the world. But the thing about that is we read in Genesis 3, sin entered our world. What is sin? It's basically disobedience to God. God told Adam and Eve to do this and not do this. They disobeyed God. And because of their sin, we are now sinners and sinful. And we're ultimately broken. We're broken people. And in our brokenness, here's the interesting thing about humanity, right? While we might disagree about all kinds of stuff, when it comes to our brokenness, I think everybody could look around and say something is wrong. This is not the way it's supposed to be. I mean, look at our world right now, the coronavirus, right? I want to encourage you and tell you the coronavirus is not God's desire for us. The virus is a result of our sin and our brokenness. And so the gospel tells us that we've sinned, and because of our sin, there's brokenness in the world, and the only response to that sin and brokenness is the gospel, the good news of Jesus, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And that when we repent, when we turn away from our sins and in faith trust Jesus, The Bible says we will be saved. And when we repent and believe, here's the incredible thing about the good news of Jesus Christ. What we do is we recover and we pursue God's design. We come back to the way God originally intended creation to be from the very beginning. And so we can share Jesus because we've experienced Jesus. It's like you going and leaving a review of that restaurant. Why? Can you do that? Because you've experienced it. Number two, and Jesus is going to get to this later in this book, we've been empowered by the Holy Spirit to share Jesus. Look at what Jesus says in Acts 1.8. Acts 1.8 comes after the death and resurrection. Jesus is about to ascend to the Father, and this is what he says to the disciples, and it's true for you and I today. He says this, but you, that's you and I, we will receive power 
when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my what? Witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. I've heard one pastor say it like this at the very end. Well, what's our Jerusalem? What's our Judea? What's our Samaria? It's here, near, there, and everywhere. We've been empowered by the Spirit to share. We extend the mission that Jesus begun because the Holy Spirit comes upon us and in us. We've been empowered by the Holy Spirit to share Jesus. And lastly, and this should be the challenge for all of us, we should desire to share Jesus. I want to challenge you right now in this moment, because here's the, here's the tough thing about where we're at right now, right? All of us are really introspective right now. We're protecting ourselves. We're thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about our families, and that's important right now. We need to protect ourselves, but I want to encourage you. Are you desiring right now to share Jesus? Do you desire to share Jesus with your friends, your family, your neighbors? You might have to do it differently you might have to go online, you might have to send a text message, you might have to shoot a video, but do you desire to share Jesus? Because that's what the Holy Spirit helps us to do. Jesus reminds us that in this moment, the Holy Spirit helps us to share Jesus. Let's keep reading in, starting in John 16. End of verse 4. He says this, I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is for your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. So Jesus helps us see first what we just talked about, that the Holy Spirit helps us to share Jesus. But I think the second thing that he gets at is that the Holy Spirit helps expose sin. Now, I get it, right? In this moment, none of us want to talk about sin. I mean, sin is that taboo topic that we, don't never, we never want to talk about. But especially when there's a pandemic, we don't want to talk about sin. But what did I just share about sin? Here's what I want you to, to understand, that in this moment, everything that we're experiencing with the brokenness of our world is because of our sin. That this was not the way that God intended our world to be. And so it's important that the Holy Spirit expose sin, that he exposes my sin, he exposes your sin, that he exposes everyone's sin. Sin, And that's what Jesus means when he talks about when he comes, he will convict the world. He will expose the sin. He will open up ourselves and show us, listen, I didn't create you to do that, to think like that. And then he will bring conviction where you recognize internally that the way you're living your life is not the way you're supposed to be living. That's what leads us to repentance. The, the metaphor shifts a little bit. The helper, the Holy Spirit is still a helper, but he's helping in a different way. Now he's not helping to witness, but he's actually helping to prosecute and judge sin. He's showing us in our hearts that the sin that we live with, the sin that we see in our world is not right, but wrong. And he's judging that sin, judging in a good way, showing us that this is not the way we were created. What's he judging? What does the Holy Spirit convict the world of? Jesus refers to three things. Number one, sin. And he talks about, basically, he's convicting the world of sin. Why? Because we have rejected the person and work of Jesus. Remember when John talks about the world, he's talking about those who are bent against God. And so what John is referring to, through the words of Jesus, is we have sinned by ultimately rejecting Jesus. Number two, What's the Holy Spirit convicting the world of righteousness? 
Why righteousness? Because we are failing to live up to God's standard. God is perfect, holy, and righteous. And we are broken, sinful, wrong. And so we're convicted of that righteousness. And last, what does the Holy Spirit convict the world of? Judgment. In what way? Because we have judged falsely. The things that we think are right are often wrong. The the way that we think things should be is not the way that God wants them to be. And so we've judged wrongly. We've judged not according to the way of the Lord, but according to the way of the world. And Jesus says that the Holy Spirit is going to come and convict us of those things. And so why does the Holy Spirit expose sin? I think that this is ultimately what Jesus is kind of getting at beneath the surface. You've probably heard it. Maybe you've even said it before, right? Ignorance is bliss. We all know that is not true, right? How many of you have ever had the check engine light come uh, on on your car? And you know the first thing that I like to do is pretend that it never happened, (laughs) Right, Because I don't want to even begin to think about what's wrong with the car. And then number two, how much that's actually going to cost. But you know as well as I do that if you you act as if the check engine light's not on, it's only going to get worse. It's not going to get better. We've been in this Lent Bible reading plan uh, through the book of Jeremiah. And it's incredible to me through after reading uh, over 30 chapters of the book of Jeremiah, how many times the people of Judah just close their eyes to the message that Jeremiah has for them. And they just don't even want to think about it. And part of what the Holy Spirit is doing by exposing our sin is this. Without our recognition of our sin, we do not see our need for Jesus. That's so important, right? Because if you're you're honest with yourself, right? Again, go back to what I said at the very beginning. Something is wrong with our world. I mean, that's apparent right now, right? That there's something broken in our world. And so if we reject our sin and we say, no, it's not me, it's everybody else, we're failing to recognize that not only does the world need Jesus, but we need Jesus, And so when we recognize our sin, we recognize our need. And when we recognize our need, it takes us a step closer to recognizing that Jesus is the answer to our need. So we need to know that there's something wrong, that we have sin in our lives. We need the Holy Spirit to expose our sin. I want you to think about it like this. In this season of uncertainty, people are looking for hope, right? We're, we're literally, we're all looking for hope. How will you show the need for Jesus to those around you? How will you, in a way, expose the sin and brokenness in our world to help people see the reality that they need Jesus? Lastly, let's look at verses 12 through 15 in John 16. This is what Jesus says. He says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. So we've seen that the Holy Spirit helps us share Jesus. We've seen that the Holy Spirit exposes sin. The last thing that I think Jesus tells us in these four verses is that the Holy Spirit helps us to live faithfully. Look at what Jesus says. He says, when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you. He will guide us into all truth. Now that's important. Why? What's the concern of the disciples this entire time? Jesus, where are you going? They've been, literally, it's the definition of a disciple. They have been following Jesus the entire time. And now, Jesus, you're telling us that you're going away. Jesus, who are we supposed to follow? Where are we supposed to go? What are we supposed to do? 
And for most of us, especially right now, that's what we're thinking about. Where are we, God, where are we going to turn? Where are we supposed to go? What are we supposed to do? And so for Jesus, what he's saying here is, listen, guys, it's important that I go away because when I go away, I'm sending the Holy Spirit. Even though my physical presence is leaving the earth, my spirit, the Holy Spirit, is coming to you to guide you. Why? Ultimately, to live faithfully. To live for Jesus. To follow him. I mean, right now, for those of us who have kids, we are with our children nearly 24-7, right? You can pray. Pray for me right now, right? (laughs) Pray for all of us. And I think about my kids. When I take my kids somewhere that they've never been before, especially Gabe, Gabe's really skittish about big crowds or loud noises, you know. So when we go to the Superdome for a Saints game or for the, uh, the, the Monster Jam or the, just a few weeks ago before all of this coronavirus stuff, I took him to the, uh, the uh, UNO Lakefront Arena to go see the Harlem Globetrotters. I have to lead Gabe. I have to guide him because he's, he doesn't know what he's about ready to walk into. And so he's a little fearful. And what Jesus is saying for us, that's what the Holy Spirit is doing. He's guiding us. He's literally walking in front of us, holding our hands, saying, this is how I want you to live your life. This is where I want you to go. What will the Holy Spirit teach us? I think there's two things that Jesus refers to. Number one, he says he's going to guide us into all truth. And I think that when Jesus is referring to all truth, what he's saying is what the Holy Spirit's guiding us into, leading us into, is understanding who God is and how to obediently live for him. That's why the Holy Spirit's helping us to live faithfully. Part of it is we're being reminded of what Jesus said and who Jesus is and what he taught about God and then turning that into action that we might live for God. The second thing that Jesus refers to at the end of this passage is the things to come. And I think what Jesus is talking about there is the future, that there are going to be unknowns, right? We don't all have a playbook where we know how everything is going to play out. I mean, think about where we're at right now. How many of us a month ago thought we would be here with the coronavirus? Not many of us, And part of what Jesus is saying is even now, even in this moment with all of the unknowns, he has sent help through his Holy Spirit to help us understand where we're going and what to do next. To live faithfully for him. I think about a few things. Uh, There's a lady in our church, Miss Marie. She'd probably hate that I'm sharing this story with you. But just a few weeks ago, she texted some of the pastors and then shared last Sunday with all of our leaders. In the midst of doing all of this, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, led her to write personal notes to her neighbors, people that she had never met met before, to simply say, listen, I know this is a scary time. I know that you might need help. I want you to know that I'm here for you. There's nowhere in the Bible that it says, write notes to your neighbors when a virus pandemic breaks out, right? Right? But being led by the Holy Spirit, Miss Marie used this opportunity to live faithfully for Jesus. And I think that's part of what Jesus is saying here, that in this moment, in this season, when you don't know what's going on, the Holy Spirit takes you by the hand and says, follow me. And he leads us to live faithfully for God. Think about it like this. In this season of uncertainty, People are looking for hope. How will you live faithfully for God in the midst of uncertainty? Because here's what I believe, that even in, in, even in all the uncertainty, if we're living faithfully for God, people are going to look around and they're going to see Christians doing Christian things. They're going to see Christians have faith and trust the Holy Spirit and walk by that faith. And they're going to begin to ask questions. Why are they doing that? Why are they living like that? And it's that, in that opportunity, we have the ability to share the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. The disciples, I think that they understood this more as Jesus shared these realities with them. And I, I want to remind you of this truth as we close this morning. In the absence of a physical Jesus, 
We're given the Holy Spirit to help us live for Jesus. Most of us, if we're honest with ourselves right now, we would say, God, it would be incredible if we could have Jesus right here, right now, in this moment. And listen, before Jesus left and sent the Holy Spirit, the disciples would have said the same thing. But what I want to remind you, in all of the uncertainty, in all of the unknowns that we're living in right now, if you know Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit. And because you have the Holy Spirit, what do you have? You have help. Help to share Jesus, help to expose sin, and help to live faithfully for Jesus. And so as we close this morning, I want to ask you two simple questions. Number one, do you have the Holy Spirit? Do you have the Holy Spirit, meaning have you trusted in Jesus? When the gospel has been presented to you, has been there, there have been a moment in your life when you've repented of your sins and turned away to follow Jesus. Because listen, in this moment of uncertainty, in this moment when it seems at times that there's little to no hope, the only place that you can find hope is in the person and work of Jesus. And so do you have the Holy Spirit? And number two, are you living in the power of the Holy Spirit? If you're a follower of Jesus, you have the help of the Holy Spirit. Are you living in that power? Things are crazy. A lot of unknowns. Who knows when we're going to be able to gather physically again? Who knows if school's going to come back this spring, right? Who knows when this ban of gatherings, or when we're going to be able to get out and live life normally again. But here's what I want you to remember amidst everything. If you know Jesus, you have help. And that help is found in the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, thank you for loving us and sending your son Jesus to save us. And even in sending your son Jesus to save us, you didn't leave us alone, but then you sent your Holy Spirit to bring us and give us help. And God, in this midst, in the midst of all of this uncertainty, Father, what we're praying for is for help. And God, my, my prayer for all of us, those of us who know Jesus, God, that we would lean into your Spirit that we would live by faith in the power of your Spirit. For those of us who don't know you, Father, that in this moment right now would be an opportunity to trust in your Son, Jesus. And so we love you. We thank you for loving us. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. In this moment, as we go into a time of response, I want to encourage you, literally right where you're at, whether you're in your living room or laying in your bed or taking a walk, you can respond to Jesus. It's as simple as what I said, recognizing your need for Jesus, that you are broken and sinful and separated from God, and the only way to be saved is to repent, to turn away from your sin the way you've been living, and in faith, trusting Jesus. And in your own words, saying, God, forgive me for my sins. I'm trusting in Jesus to save me. If that's you this morning, I want to encourage you. If you're watching on Facebook to respond, put a comment there. I'm trusting in Jesus today because we want to follow up with you. We want to help you take next steps to follow Jesus. Maybe you're in this moment saying, I need help to live by the power of the Holy Spirit. Put that in the comments. Let let us as pastors and leaders of Vintage Church reach out to you to help you live your life with the help and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so let's take these next few moments, wherever you're at, and let's respond to Jesus. you
is faithful. And I pray this morning you've been encouraged with that. We, as a team, pray that you experience that this week, maybe in some small way or some real way. Uh, God's faithfulness, the, the greatness of his faithfulness to us is every day, and we hope that you you see that. So thankful for Mark and Christy and, and Kyle for leading us. And as we close this morning, I again want to just thank you for uh, joining us. I want to remind you of giving and a, and a couple of things. When it comes to giving, you know, although the building is closed, our needs are continuing. And uh, we anticipate even more ministry needs on the other side of this. And I just want to invite you and remind you to continue to be faithful in your giving. Often at Vintage, we talk about that we have four ways to give. And so we have a web page, and there's a give tab there that you can go and make a gift that way. And uh, when you close this down, you can pull out your phone and you can text VC NOLA to 77977 and you can make a gift there. But really right now in, in, in this time, one of the best ways that you can give is actually to write a check or on your online bill pay, send us a check, mail us a check. The, the, the post office is still open. We're still receiving checks and that's one of the, the best ways. And so in this time, let's continue to be faithful. And let's continue to be regular in our giving because our generosity uh, will still change lives and will still equip us to do incredible things. And so I want to pray for our giving. I want to pray for us as we close out this morning. So if you would, join me in praying just one more time. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. And though you're physically not here, your Holy Spirit is empowering and with every single one of us. And so we pray that this week we would, we would feel that, we would sense that, we'd be attuned to your Spirit's working in our life and that we would experience your faithfulness. In the midst of all this chaos and craziness, Lord, help us to see and experience your faithfulness this week. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. As we close, a couple of reminders. One, comment in the comment section. Our team is meeting virtually on Tuesday for a prayer and a team meeting time. We would love to pray for you. We would love to know if there's any ways that we can serve you. Um, also, maybe when you before you get off of this screen this morning, maybe you want to share this gathering. What, what an incredible opportunity we have to simply share this with maybe our other Facebook friends or other friends that might need this encouragement this morning. Hope you had a great morning. As we close this morning, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And may God empower us to live the gospel, serve the city, and be the church. Have a great week.